Well, hello there. My name is HW. Thank you so much for watching Tone Jiggy TV. I wanted to give you my predictions for modeling and all the popular units in 2023. Please stay tuned because the very last one is probably something you're not going to expect and something that I think is going to change pretty much everything. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the Helix, Pod Go, HX Stomp, the Catalyst, the whole line from Line 6. Obviously, Line 6 is the OG. Um, you know, it all started with that first pod, the bean. These guys really really kind of uh, put modeling on the map in a lot of ways. Obviously, they weren't the very first. There were some other digital representations out there. Um, but Line 6 is kind of regarded as being the first kind of big modeling company that probably made it onto all of our pedal boards, your pedal board and my pedal board. One thing that makes Line 6 unique from all the other companies, from Kemper, from Neural DSP, from Fractal, um, from, from maybe not from quite everybody, but almost everybody, Line 6 is not a company run by engineers. Line 6 is a company owned by a much larger company, Yamaha, right? And you can tell that the overall strategy of Line 6 is um, a lot different. Um, Line 6 has really, in the past couple of years, moved to having products in all of the different price ranges, right? And so that has been a tremendous benefit to consumers, but their product lineup now looks very different than everybody else. What started with the Helix and just a flagship sort of product um, has really grown to a full line of HX family stuff. We have the HX Stomp, the HX Stomp XL. We have the Pod Go. We have the Catalyst. We have even the new versions of the DL4. All of these products, the Helix, the Helix LT, all of these products fit in a, in, a, in a different price category, but they all use the same algorithms. This is something, or, or many of the same algorithms, right? Some, some are, are just like kind of proprietary to some of the units. Um, for example, the DL4 only has the delays and now it has the Helix Reverbs, the new one. But if you really look at what Line 6 has done over the years, um, I think they're gonna be generally consistent with what they, they have been putting out. What I mean by that is, if you look all the way back to the very first stuff, when you look back to the pod, right? And then they've upgraded their hardware. They've upgraded stuff with the pod XT and they went to a floorboard with the pod HD 500. Eventually we get to the DL4 um, and th that line of effects. All of those effects end up going in the M series, M5, M9, uh, M13, right? I, I loved all those pedals, so did a bunch of people in Nashville, a bunch of players. Tom Bukovac really put that M9 on the map. Um, but what you see from Line 6 is this, this um, I don't want to speak ill about it, I think it's genius, but it's this, sort of, it's this sort of Taco Bell approach, right? How many ways can we put together the same things in combinations that fit other player needs? Right, And so they have a solution like this, they have a solution that's a little more limited like the Pod Go, and then they have the full um, Helix. I, I, I really don't mean that Taco Bell comparison to be disparaging. Um, I, the quality of their algorithms, the quality of the models, they are what they are. Um, you can judge them for yourself. I'm merely pointing out that all the way back in the beginning, what Line 6 likes to do is carry forward kind of all of their sounds. So from the DL4 to the M series, you have the same delays. I use the stuff on the DL4. I use those same delays on the M series. I now use those same delays in the in the Line 6 Helix and the HX Stomp. Uh, th those are the two that I personally use. Um, and um, I, I have those sounds and have had those sounds in, in just better and better units going forward. Now, of course, they've added more. Um, but I really think what Line 6 is going to do is do that in the future. I don't know that we're getting a Helix 2.0. I don't think there is a Helix 2 coming ever. I really don't. And and let me explain. I, I believe the next Helix is going to be something more like a Helix HD or a Helix Plus or a Helix Turbo, a Helix Accelerated, a higher position price point in which Line 6 will take all of the stuff they've had from the DL4 to the M9 to the M5 to the Helix stuff, the Catalyst, all the models will be there. There'll be much more computation power. There maybe will even be the ability to do something like tone matching or some sort of capture or maybe shoot your own IRs or maybe um, a touch screen with a more in-depth you know, IR match. Uh, uh, tone match, uh, the EQ match, or maybe even just a more graphic EQ. Um, maybe it'll be able to get on the cloud. I don't know. But what I do know about Line 6 is they're not going to get rid of, they're not going to replace the Helix. What I would imagine is that new 
um, uh, new algorithms, new models start at the top and matriculate down. Um, and we've kind of seen that with some of the other stuff where PodGo doesn't get updates as fast as Helix. So I think we're going to get um, maybe towards the end of the year, we're going to get hints or we're going to get they're working on something. I know they're working on something. Um, we're going to get maybe a touchscreen unit with some new feature capability, but it's not going to replace the Helix line. I believe the HX DNA is going to stay with us. We're going to get something more at the top of the heap, and um, that's also going to maybe make its way into a premier version of of uh, uh, native. Um, maybe native and this new unit can can have some advanced capabilities. Some of those models that are new will only run there. Some of them will run on the Helix and HX family stuff. I think this is very much in Line 6's DNA to keep products around. They have products at all of these different uh, uh, prices and that these price levels. And that basically means that anybody, whether you're on the PodGo um, or an HX Stomp, you know, or whether you're going uh, Helix LT, Helix, the Rack Helix, whatever. Maybe you're on the Catalyst. There's price points. They compete with Boss. They're trying to compete with QC and 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 Kemper and um, and these other higher priced units, uh, the uh, Fractal. And so Line Six is really doing something that most people aren't doing. They're trying to hit the very top and the very bottom. I think they're super strong at the bottom. I don't think they're strongest at the top. I think if we're being honest, Line Six at this point is not best in class at any one thing. Um, and that's I, I don't I don't I'm not putting down them for that. I'm just saying at this point. Can anyone say the reverbs in the Line 6 are the greatest reverbs out there? Are they better than Strymon? Are they better than everything? I don't think that's true. Are the delays the best thing out there that nothing touches the delays? No, that's not true. Are the models uh, uh, you know, better than uh, Fractal or QC? Are, is the tone you can get better than Kemper? I think if anything, people say they're on par. Um, and so, but, but what Line 6 is best at is getting all of these things together in a very easy to use editor and giving you the modularity to use these at all these different price points. I don't think that's a strategy they're going to give up. They've been very successful at it. For that reason, I don't think there's I don't think we're going to get a Helix 2 and a HX Stomp 2 and a this 2 and a that 2 and a this sequel. I don't think they're going to make their stuff obsolete. I think um we're in a new era where you don't just come out with another pedal three years later. Um, they're going to maintain support for all this stuff. They have maintained support. Bravo to Line 6 for maintaining support. I really think that's the best thing to do for your product. I love it. I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan. And I will be buying whatever the next advanced cool unit that works with a phone, tap, uh, you know, touch screen, works with my, you know, Google glasses, whatever. I don't know. Whatever they're going to do, I'm a fan of it. That's what I think we're going to get. Maybe something up there, top tier from uh, Line 6 this year. Okay, let's talk about the Kemper. Obviously, uh, HW here, uh, I've, I've been prolific in the past few years in my attempts to uh, profile the world, and I'm still very much on that journey. The Kemper is still the unit that I use the most. I'm a big fan. I have some great friends over there. Um, I know nothing. I have no official news. I don't have any insider knowledge about what's going on at Kemper. What I do think we're gonna see in 2023 I do think towards the end of the year, we may get some hints, maybe middle of the year, end of the year, we may get some hints on some sort of new hardware iteration. Um, I, I do not believe they are done supporting this unit. They've just done the iPad, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the phone version of the app. We now have a phone and iPad version of Rig Manager to delve into all of the stuff live if you have a, a stage or whatnot. I think all of that, the stage doing uh, uh having having the the uh, improvements to rig manager becoming the editor rig manager is now a full editor i think all that was was so that they could make a stage that had all the same capability but there were a little less buttons and so there's a couple things on the stage that are harder to get to if you're just pressing buttons than on the full kemper unit now that they have the uh the editor built out and it works with your phone and it works um and you can plug into it um, I think that uh, the door is open for Kemper to get to a smaller size unit. I don't think it's going to be this small, but um, I think they're going to get to something that's a little more pedal board friendly. I think that is really where Kemper's lacking right now. The stage is a full size pedal board. Same thing with the Helix, right? The Helix is a full size pedal board. The stage is a full size pedal board. This guy, 
This HX Stomp is the Helix meant to fit on a pedal board. I think Kemper is going to go there, and I think there is tremendous market share for them there. Um, I think in general there is an opinion that Kemper um, is maybe one of the more musical sounding units. I think it's the best sounding unit, to be honest with you, um, for a couple different reasons. Um, one, I think... Um, I, I do think just the profiling technology does kind of beat modeling in terms of how do I get the sound of that amp versus this amp versus this amp versus this amp rather than um, just trying to augment a model that's there. Uh, I also think that, um, you know, uh, the Kemper just has a lot of features, a lot of parameters that are so musical. Going back to that first idea uh, uh, that I talked about of companies does, uh, run by engineers, um, Christoph is very much an engineer. He's very much a problem solver. He's very much a tinkerer and an iterator. And um, he's not someone who is kind of, I, I've never gotten the impression that Kemper has a business strategy to sort of um, have something at every price point. I think, um, and, and I think that's pretty obvious. If you look at how the profiler was originally marketed and made, um, this was really um, a device offered to specifically professional musicians. I don't even think they really thought the hobbyist market was going to come along. It was expensive back then too. Now the price is about the same as it was, but um, due to inflation, the prices on the Kempers have actually been coming down because inflation has been going up and not just this year. Um, the, the Kempers are uh, uh, much more in the realm of other consumer modelers where at, at, when they first came out, they were a little on the pricey side. And um, I don't think people were willing to spend as much on digital back then. I do think we are going to, like I said, we're going to get more support for the software. Um, I think we're going to get more effects and things like that just, just on their road roadmap. But um, I really think that these, the editors and the, and the software capability is opening the door for a smaller unit with maybe the same capability, maybe less capability. I don't know. It's not going to be powered, but I think it's basically like, a Kemper Stage Junior. If you get that thing a little bit smaller, it's going to live beautifully uh, on a pedal board. I think a lot of people are waiting for that. I think that could be the a better selling unit than the racks and the heads. I really do. Is it going to outsell the Stage? I don't know. Um, from what I see out there, it looks like the Stage is still the most popular unit, obviously, to me, um, in terms of sales right now. Um, there's a lot of profiler heads and racks out there because they've been out for years. But to me, I'm going to bet that we see some hardware hints towards the maybe the middle of the year, but I, I don't know how close they are. They've also opened up a Chicago store. It would be great to have some new products to show in there. I don't know what, what all that's about. I, I really don't know. Um, I'm going to get up there and visit um, uh, in the not so distant future. But just my speculation, Kemper, all the software stuff has been working towards a unit with way less buttons, um, something that's small, not as small as this, but I really think that's going to happen. Okay, let's talk about uh, the Quad Cortex. Full disclosure, um, I am a Marketplace partner uh, at, with Neural. You will see Tone Junkie stuff for sale on the Marketplace when it's out. But it's not out. And that is sort of the issue facing Quad Cortex right now. Look, th this is a unit that is truly can be best in class. It can be. The touchscreen, the size, um, it's, it's large enough that it could be an all-in-one unit. It's small enough that it can fit on a pedal board. You can do so much to it. I really applaud the guys at Neural. Um, they are friends of mine. Um, uh, like I said, Marketplace partner. Um, I know some guys over there. Doug, also an engineer. Also a guy who I believe is trying to put out a best-in-class product. Um, and uh, maybe there's some ideas for future iterations. Uh, I believe that's there. Um, I don't have any insider info on that, but I believe that's there. He's a very smart gentleman. But... Where Quad Cortex is at right now is kind of like where I saw Kemper in the first couple of years. There's still some work to be done to deliver all the features that they've talked about. And that kind of comes along with it. Look, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say this is a beta unit. This is a fully functioning unit. This thing is awesome. Uh, the capture tech is great. The effects are great. Early on, there were some issues with the reverbs taking up too much DSP. Neural fixed that. There were some ins and outs issues. Neural fixed that. Um, I would love to see an editor right now, uh, but we don't have it. We're still waiting on uh, uh, the ability to put plugins on this thing. There's more coming. This is kind of the, there's two sides of the coin when it comes to companies that are going to continue to support digital products well after their release. It often means that the user base is going to request certain features and the company is going to say, yes, we're going to do that. And 
that puts consumer, a lot of people will hear that and go, I'm buying it. It's coming out next week. I, I heard they're about to do it. They're about to do it. They're about to do that. Really what goes on at companies is you have finite resources. I don't know what exactly is going on at Neural. I don't have any insider information. I'm just telling you as someone, as someone who has uh, in my past career, uh, you know, really been instrumental in running a business with several dozen employees, like maybe 25 employees and millions of dollars in revenue. You have to, you, you often have more plans than you have capital. You often have more ambition than you have people, right? And you have to decide where you're going to put your effort and where you're going to put your dollars. What I think is happening with Neuro right now is they are so sh focused and busy getting these units produced. This has been a very, this has been a commercially successful unit. Um, it, it, it is a best in class type of unit that's debatable. I know, but I'm just saying, um, it's hard to have that discussion without including this unit in it, given that it's one of the only touchscreen units on the market, given that, um, uh, it, it is, it does have great product support. It has a, a capturing technology as well as modeling technology, as well as uploading your own IRs. It has a very fancy app, but when you have something that successful and you have to scale production, especially when we've been in this time where supply chains have been uh, the challenge for every company producing pretty much every product, and then you have companies like Sweetwater who are just ordering, 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 pre-orders, ordering, ordering. Does anyone know when I can get one? I'm finally waiting on mine. I'm waiting on mine. If you go online, you see so many people still waiting on this unit. It's very difficult to take the dollars you have and say, okay we're going to slow down production, right? I mean, it doesn't make sense, right? You're, I really believe these guys are working hard to get all these units out. That, that's why I believe. They haven't told me that. That's what I believe. Because of that, um, there are some features people are waiting on. I see some people online growing um, kind of upset, and I do see people saying, I'm selling this unit because this isn't available. Plugins aren't available. Uh, I have never seen Neural say when plugins would be available, and that was never promised at launch, so I don't know why people are upset about that. Marketplace. I see a lot of people upset the marketplace isn't available. I, too, wish the marketplace was available. I think that once the marketplace is available, um, Quad Cortex is going to be a, a, a really, a really um, big platform. Um, and I, who I think that kind of, I think, should be focused on that is Line 6. I actually think that in a lot of ways, this unit is the Helix 2. Um, it's the touchscreen everyone's been talking about. Obviously, Neural maybe was inspired by or uh, uh, had came up with a kind of a similar looking UI to the Helix. Um, it's very easy to use. I think the addition of a touchscreen is awesome here. Being able to use these as knobs is just uh, it's just killer. I think what we're going to see from Neural is finally getting the walls pulled down this year um, when it comes to uh, the marketplace taking down walls. Um, I'm in an interesting situation. I'll just tell you this. I'm in a very interesting situation because I really want to offer everything for the Quad Cortex. And in the next couple of weeks, I'm just going to be putting more and more free stuff up there because I, I honestly feel like at this point, what else can I do? You know, I want to be able to produce things for Kemper, uh, uh, Helix, Line 6 platforms, uh, Quad Cortex, um, and, and others that I'm working on right now. The issue that I have is um, I, I can, of course, offer free stuff everywhere, but, you know, acquiring amps um, is expensive business. And um, so I need to sell these things. And what kind of message does it send if I charge on Helix, charge on Kemper, and then everything's free on Quad Cortex just because we don't have a marketplace? So then that that then I'm basically asking Kemper and Helix people to subsidize and pay for the Quad Cortex stuff. Uh, but now I'm. I, but what I've been doing is not putting out quad cortex stuff, which I think has been a mistake. I, I, I'm playing this unit, and I want to be involved in this community, um, and and so I got to put out more free stuff. I got to offer people more free stuff. There's so many people following me on the app. I get emails literally every week about when's more quad cortex stuff coming out, and I want to offer it. Um, so if anyone from from uh, quad cortex is watching, neural is watching. I know you guys are working hard. Um, here I am patiently waiting. Uh, let, I, I really hope that marketplace comes soon. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. Thank you guys for your hard work, uh, but I'm chomping at the bit here. Um, so uh, kind of in the situation where now where I haven't been putting anything out and, uh, you know, that's another thing where it's like, okay, well, I'm just leaving it alone because what I can't charge for it. That's not really kind of my heart either. 
So it's been a little struggle. So I'm just going to put out stuff there and uh, maybe match it with some free stuff on some other platforms. That way I feel like everyone's getting maybe maybe some the same amount or equivalent free stuff. Uh, maybe that's just what I'll do. I think Quad Cortex can be a 10 out of 10. I think it's close. Um you know, does it sound the best? Uh, I, I don't think it. I don't think it can't. I think it's a matter of preference. Um, I did a video a while back uh, where I compared uh, Helix, Quad Cortex, and Kemper, and I think most people um, chose either the Kemper or Quad Cortex there. So, kind of up to you what you think sounds best. A lot of that can be the character of the reverb and the delay, uh, also. But I think Quad Cortex is is. Uh, we're not going to see any new hardware units, but we're going to get some really good. Um, Really good stuff from Quad Cortex this year. I think they're going to open the unit up completely, and I'm really happy about that. Let's talk about Fractal. Uh, these guys have had a really hard time uh, with the launch of the M, not the uh, uh, FM9 and uh, the FM3. Um, obviously, the FM9 had a bunch of uh, problems. We were kind of in that whole, uh, you know, shutdown situation, and they had a real hard time getting these units out. That turned a lot of people towards the FM3. Um, and now the FM9 Turbo is out and that is available. I think Fractal is, is already, I can see this growing huge online. They're about to have a huge year. Because of the delays, I don't think anything new hardware wise is going to come from them. That doesn't seem to make any sense. These FM9 Turbos sort of just became widely available. Um, and even now you can have a hard time getting them. Um, but, between the FM3, the FM9, I think uh, Fractal is just going to continue to grow here. You know, Fractal's like a, a horse that's been in the race. I've never, they, they obviously they're not selling as many units as Line 6. I don't think anybody is. Um, I don't know where Quad Cortex is in terms of sales of, of compared to Line 6, but obviously Line 6 with all these different price points, they have um, a ton of, uh, uh, a, a ton of units that they're moving through huge distributors. Fractal stands out to me as being kind of like, the Android phone uh, to all of this. Um, they have all these different levels. It, they're infinitely tweakable. I think if you're an Android user and you really love tweaking and the fine tuning, you're going to find a home here. Um, for a smaller company like them, who's not you know owned by Yamaha or something, they really are hitting these big three price points, which are really great between um, between the X3, the FM9, and the FM3. I don't think any big hardware we're going to get out of here. Um, but I am excited to start offering some Tone Junkie stuff for all of these platforms because um, it's been something I've been wanting to do for a while. So I'm very excited about that. And um, I think, I think I, you know, I'm not sure anybody has as much product support over the years as, uh, as uh, uh, Fractal does. Um, this is a product lineup that now that's available is going to grow in market share. Um, it sounds great. I got to be honest with you. It sounds really great. The effects are incredible, um, really incredible. Like every effect in there is really good. Um, and they have a ton of them to the point that you see famous artists using it just for the effects. So I think that's really cool. Um, and nobody uses the HX like effects. It's just like, who does that? Right. Cause it's like I said, these effects might be best in class. I think that's fair to say. Okay. Last but not least, I hinted at this at the beginning of the video, um, I actually think Tonex is about to be a complete game changer. Um, look, let me explain. Tonex appears to be approaching this modeling, capture, profile, digital world from a much different place than everybody else. IK Multimedia is uh, touting this Tonex thing as uh, the AI machine, you know, modeling for tone. Now, I happen to know that this thing uses AI and machine learning too. But um, these guys uh, know their software, right? And so basically what they've given us is the ability to capture um, in a unit that is on the computer. And then you can use those on the computer. Now, this creates a big problem. And to me, all these people who are like, Tonex, 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 I always go back to this. I, I think, okay, great. I, I'm, I don't want to just sit around and play plugins. And I don't really enjoy playing the guitar through studio monitors all the time. I like having amps in the room. Like, I like amplifiers. I have like 40 something amplifier. Look, they're literally every Fender made in 65 is over here. I, I, I don't understand the people who just want to sit in front of their computer. I, I get it if that's your gig. If, if you don't play out ever, that's fine. But 
To say that at this point, Tonex could compete with any of these other units, I can't even take it with me. Like I can't even, I'm not gonna take my laptop to a gig, like that's suicide. Um, I'm not a keyboard player. Um, th I, there's already a huge amount of people online who, you know, are talking about, is it beer resistant? I'm spilling beer on here. You're not bringing a MacBook to those gigs. So at this point, Tonex is just software plug-in and that limits it. But let's look at some of IK Multimedia's other platforms, uh, other products. Look at these. These are pedals that they are selling that take their digital effects with them. I think this year, uh, IK Multimedia is going to let out of the bag that they are doing something absolutely genius. They realize the path to success for modeling and profiling is to first create a robust creator community. Uh, honestly, this is something that is hurting this unit right now. The walls that are up with this unit are not helping this community grow. Massively successful, awesome, killer unit. It's going to explode once the store is out there. It's going to explode once... Uh, you know what I'm saying? Kemper released a... Uh, uh, we had uh, um, the, the, the rig manager with uh, the rig pool and uh, the rig exchange is, is the word I'm looking for. Users came and flooded in and just flood... You could find every amp you want. Now, the issue that arises there is... Um, and it's the same issue that the quad cortex has right now. The signal-to-noise ratio on the rig exchange and on... Quad Cortex Cloud is very poor. There are a lot of mediocre and just garbage stuff. There's a lot of great stuff too. But what happens is for that great stuff to get out there, you end up having to search and search and search and search. And so then what comes along are people like Michael Britt, like myself, like um, uh, Michael Nielsen, like um, uh, all sorts of great creators John Cordy, who jump out there and they use social media to create the layer on top. The layer on top helps users digest content on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. They see stuff and then they don't have to search blindly through names and trying things out. You still can, but you can hear something. You can begin to trust a brand like Tone Junkie and go, I like Tone Junkie stuff. I'm going to try out their new thing. I don't like Tone Junkie stuff. I hate that guy. He has a punchable face. I get that too. But what happens is you, you have this layer on top where you can go and search for yourself. You can go mining for gold and you will often find gold. And you can go on the boards and they'll tell you there's some great creators out there that are not charging money. But at the end of the day, nobody has made more free stuff for the Kemper than moi. Um, I have a ton of free stuff uh, for the HX... Uh, uh, Stomp and Line 6 Helix coming out. Um, there's nothing but free stuff for this unit, right? And even my free stuff, I want to get out there, right? I want people to enjoy it and play it. Everyone's support has always meant so much to me. And so I do always want to say thank you. And I do always want to... Um, I just appreciate it, right? Tonex, I think, realizes this. And they realize that if they're going to get people in to buy a pedal that plays Tonex Captures... They first have to get a robust community going. And that's why I myself am very much experimenting with IK Multimedia Tone X right now. And you will see very, very, very shortly some Tone Junkie stuff about on Tone X um, and available. Because I think what they're doing is they're allowing creators to come in and create freely with no walls, nothing up. And once that's there, they're going to give us the most important, the ability. That's the ability to take it with you. Tonex is a toy until you can take it with you. I really do mean that. Sure, it's going to be fun to use pl use um, plugins. And, of course, a lot of records are made with plugins. Here's the problem, though. If you use a plugin like this... How, what do I do to recreate my sound later? Well, I end up having to go get a unit like this. I end up having to go get a Kemper. I end up having to go get a unit like this. And then at that point, you've created a user of one of your competitor's products. So at this point, my opinion is this. Tonex is incredible for what it is. 
It's a toy as long as it's stuck in your computer. It's a very expensive toy. It's a great toy. It's maybe the most accurate toy out there. Maybe. It is a toy that harnesses a ton of incredible uh, technology and maybe is best in class at what it's doing. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not ready to say that yet, me personally, but maybe it is. I'm just saying it now belongs in the conversation. However, if I can't take it with me, if I don't have the, the, the ability to use it in the studio and take it with me live without taking a laptop and stuff, you know, then at that point, it's really not a professional solution because professional musicians are still playing live. And I think professional musicians still want to be able to take those things, uh, take their sounds with them. And to me, the beauty of digital is let's take all this stuff, let's make it so it works in the studio, it works live, it works um, uh, on a silent stage or a noisy stage, it works when you're on the road, um, it works in the songwriting process, going into different studios. There's no reason we can't have our digital solutions working everywhere really well. So Tonex, I think it's going to change everything in 2023. I think we're going to get a little hardware unit for it. It's going to play the captures. It might even just play, here would be something, what if it just plays the lowest quality version of the capture or it plays a reduced quality, like you put in the best quality capture, right? And it still reduces it or it, whatever. I don't know what it's going to be. Is it going to have finished effects? I don't even think it needs to. I don't think they need to, IK, uh, IK Multimedia needs to create a big all-in-one to compete with the Helix. I think they just need an amp player and then these effects. And I think it's going to absolutely, absolutely be um, a game changer to be able to have that. You're going to have creators that have hardware that is not expensive to create, to capture their own stuff. Then you're going to have uh, uh, players who can either capture their own stuff or just choose to um, get what's up there. I think that's the way they're going because they're also making their own captures, um, which um, is pretty interesting and pretty incredible. I've been HW. It's going to be really fun to look back on that. Thanks for watching. I think this is going to be a really great year for modeling, for profiling, for capturing. And uh, thanks for the support. HW, out.